ಇತಿಪಿಸೋ ಬದೇವಾ ಅರೇಹ ಸಂಬುಧೋ ವಿಧ್ಯಾಚರಣ ಸಂಪನ್ನೋ ಸುಗತೋಕವಿದು ಅನುತ್ತರು ಪುರಿಷದಮಸಾರತಿ ಸತ್ತೇವ ಮನೋಸ್ಥಾನ Namaste. So this time we're going to talk about complete awareness. The Buddha says, monks, a monk is completely aware while moving forward or backward. One is completely aware while looking around or examining. One is completely aware while contracting or extending one's limbs. One is completely aware while wearing one's robes and carrying one's bowl. One is completely aware while eating, drinking, chewing and swallowing. One is completely aware while defecating and urinating. One is completely aware while moving, standing, sitting, reclining. Awake both when speaking and silent. in this way one abides dedicated completely aware and mindful without covetousness or depression about the world observing the body as the body so this talks about the actual result of practicing mindfulness it's a kind of state of grace like a child innocently fully aware of the body the breath the posture the movement and we have to acknowledge after a little bit of practice that there are many dark corners in our lives that means areas in which we are not fully aware for example I noticed this myself sitting and working on the computer. Sometimes I completely forget about my body. <laughs> completely unaware of my breath, my posture, my movements. I'm totally focused on the work that I'm doing. And if we do awareness of the breath as a practice and try to extend it beyond the sitting practice, into our whole life we'll find that there are many times in which we forget awareness of the breath and what do you know these are times when we also forget to breathe see we use the breath to suppress emotions we use the breath to suppress sensations that we don't want to feel for whatever reason See this is the negative part of bodily fabrication. Bodily fabrication means in breaths and out breaths. Then we're creating the body. And the opposite, the negative fabrication or the destruction of the body means not breathing in or out. <laughs> As we pointed out last time, if you stop breathing for whatever reason, for even 3 4 minutes you're dead the body can't maintain itself without breath without oxygen one of the reasons why climate change is so dangerous that the increased co2 in the atmosphere displaces the oxygen and there's less oxygen available to breathe and so people's metabolism goes down the fertility goes down their intelligence goes down see all because they forget to breathe or they don't breathe fully or they don't breathe completely to their full satisfaction and the same goes with the bodily posture it's one thing to be aware of your posture when you're in formal sitting meditation but what about when you're standing walking reclining or in between <laughs> moving from one posture to another are we aware 
Do we have, for example, a steady center of gravity? This is why, well, among other reasons, <laughs> that we posted an introduction to Qigong. Qigong is a movement and balance and energy exercise. You could call it uh, no impact aerobics, <laughs> which more or less forces you to concentrate on the breath, on the bodily posture, balance, and so on. And the interesting thing about this is that it leads to a state, kind of like a state of grace, where you're always in balance. Huh? You're, you're never in a position where if you had to stop moving, you would fall over. <laughs> you're always balanced and centered and breathing in or breathing out. So you don't have to do any special exercise to get this awareness. You can just do it by wanting to do it and observing watching. Now, one of our viewers brought up the question, is there a problem with being like a detached observer of the body? And well, yes, there is. The problem is that there isn't any detached observer of the body. <laughs> That's another kind of software that we overlay our native awareness with. See, we went about oh, four or five years ago, we went deeply into this question. No, it was even longer than that, eight or nine years ago, in our series on the existential dilemma, the existential ambiguity. And the thing is, there are two kinds of awareness reflective awareness and reflexive awareness. Reflective awareness is the simple, childlike, direct awareness of the body and the senses, the mind and so on. Reflexive awareness is when we take those simple, direct impressions and then overlay them with philosophical mumbo-jumbo or uh, some kind of moral judgments on the body or social conventions in relation to the body, such as our name, our family, our country, our religion, our job, our title. It's exhausting. But this is how the ego is created. It's called the root sequence. And you can look at it here. The root sequence of the putujana, the uneducated, untrained person, is how the ego is created. And it's created by taking the pure impressions from the senses and then to overlay them with this software, this verbal or conceptual knowledge of the so-called self, the empirical self, the illusory self, the ego. And because it's an effort, it burns up a lot of energy. So we are much better off to drop all of that. That's why the Buddha says in these verses, without being attached to anything in the world, just be aware of the body as the body. It's a body. So it has senses. It has functions different biological functions. There's nothing wrong in that. But just accept it as it is, without trying to add any significance or meaning or judgments or value or names and forms of different arrangements of terminology. And It's unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary. In fact, it's harmful. So, what happens if we just get rid of reflexive awareness and we simply reside, abide in reflective awareness? Well, what happens is that we become like a child. 
A child is innocent. A child is nonviolent. There's no lust in a child, except maybe for food. <laughs> a child plays. A child is not attached to results. A child doesn't work. A child simply experiences life directly, completely. Now, civilization, so-called civilization, has trained us not to do this, but to interpose a level of symbolic meaning between ourselves and our direct experience. So the whole point of this training, at least at this stage, is to just get rid of that. For example, in the jhanas, the meditative states taught by the Buddha, beginning with the second jhana and complete in the fourth jhana is a complete lack of inner verbalization, inner conversation, inner chatter dialogue or whatever you want to call it the blah blah of the chattering of the monkey mind <laughs> so we get rid of that how do we get rid of it simply by becoming aware of it we cannot forget to breathe if we have awareness of breathing we cannot forget to keep the body in balance if we have awareness of postures. We cannot forget to have energy available if we become aware of our energy, and so on. And we'll go through all these different layers and levels of awareness of the body in this series. Why? Because a monk should be in a state of grace, completely detached from anything in the world, fully aware of the body and its surroundings, not repressing, not denying the body, but on the other hand, not adding anything to the body, not allowing uh, software to come between the perceptions of the body and the pure awareness. And another thing is, we're not becoming aware as a purpose. Like, I'm not becoming aware so that I can do something or other. Huh? Sometimes you see people getting ready to lift a heavy object and they take a big breath. <laughs> so we're not breathing like that. We're not breathing with an aim or a purpose. We're not preparing to do something or anything. We're simply breathing. If we put our awareness into the breath, actually we'll see some very interesting things. We'll see that, for example, sometimes where we repress the breath, in order to avoid negative feelings or emotions, and we'll actually go unconscious. There'll be a moment of blankness. This happens regarding posture, as well, actually it happens in regards to everything. <laughs> Anything that we don't like, that we want to suppress the awareness of, we'll suppress the breath, and we'll actually go to sleep. Maybe we'll go into a dream where we're thinking about some designation or some verbal values or moral standards or something, some other nonsense. <laughs> and we forget about breath. We forget about posture. We forget all about our sensory inputs and we simply go to sleep and dream for a second or two. It's a good way to avoid feelings that we don't want to have. But we don't want to avoid feelings because that gives us something to work on. If we're having negative feelings, if we're having discomfort in the body, if we're out of balance, if we're out of breath, we want to know about it so that we can correct the situation. Now the problem is we're socialized 
to be a slave for eight or 10 hours a day and work for some abstract corporation. And we can't simply stop and rebuild our awareness, our reflective awareness, when and if it's necessary. So we're trained by school, by work, by socialization. So we have to undo all this training, this bad programming and wrong conditioning from society and come back to our original, pure, innocent state of grace, complete awareness of the body. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum.